We'd like to take a moment to recognize that 59E, 59 theaters, is located on the Lenape Island of Manahatta, the traditional lands of the Lenni Lenape people. We acknowledge the Lenni Lenape as the original people of the land and are grateful for this opportunity to work on it. We honor their elders past and present alongside future generations for their stewardship and continuing relationship with their territory. E59 Theatre's member event. My name is Kirsty Gockel and I am Director of Marketing here at the Theatre. So normally this time of year we would be gathering in Theatre A and we'd be sharing with you some of the exciting summer productions that we had in store for you. Sadly because of the pandemic we are instead here for another virtual update. So the biggest news and I'm sure you have not missed it is that there is finally now an end to the pandemic closures of our theatres. Yay! We're so excited and we honestly are working so hard to put all our reopening plans into motion so that we can welcome you back. So dates. So you've probably seen Broadway did make some announcements about some of their shows starting to open as early as September of 2021 through to the winter of 2022. And similarly, most of our colleagues in the off-Broadway community have a similar time span starting in September of 2021, going through into early of 2022. As you will hear this evening, we are very busy in the building undertaking a lot of construction projects to ensure that the building is in tip-top shape to welcome you guys all back live in person in January of 2022. We're very optimistic that by that time, many of the current COVID restrictions will have been relaxed. And so we really do hope that the experience you will have when you return will be much closer to normal and the experience that you have been used to. So just wanna say thank you so much for all your continued support during this challenging time. And we cannot wait to see you again in person at the theater. And now I'll pass you on to my colleague, Kelvin. Hello, members. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kelvin, and I am the Director of Ticketing Services here at 59E59 Theatres. As some of you may know, we've had to scale down our box office support team during the pandemic, and it's now just the three of us. We've had the pleasure of supporting our customers through the course of 5059's Plays in Place online programming, and a big thank you to Leah and Lloyd, who have been working in the box office remotely this whole time, and for all of their amazing support. If you ever have any questions about events, tickets, or memberships, please contact us by email at boxoffice at 59e59.org. As a reminder, we provided all members with a complimentary 2021 membership extension, which is currently set to expire on January 2022. Therefore, all memberships will not require renewals at this time. We will share further updates about memberships this upcoming fall for the next year. Speaking of our Plays in Place online programming, before we move forward with today's session, I want to share with you all a quick reminder that the last two performances of Missed Connections are this upcoming Wednesday and Thursday evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. There are a few tickets still available for this uh, Zoom experience. Uh, you may visit 59e59.org to purchase your tickets. Just a reminder, only one ticket is needed per household. Now I can pass you over to our managing director, Brian Byrne, for updates on what's going on at the theater. Thank you, Kelvin. Hello everyone. Well, at a theater, one place to go behind the scenes is backstage. But another look behind the scenes brings us to all the things that make our buildings run smoothly. Today, you'll meet our facility manager, Ryan James Monroe, and he and his staff are as critical as anyone 
and helping us all have a pleasant experience at the theater, whether comedy or tragedy. So I'm up here on the roof of the 59E59 Theatre's building, where all the heating and air conditioning equipment is. When Elizabeth built the theatres in 2003, she specified that each theatre needed its own heating and cooling systems, because a small audience watching a performance in Theatre C may need a very different environment than a sold-out show in Theatre A. This summer, we're undertaking to replace some of this rooftop equipment. That will involve a crane parked on 59th Street, removing equipment bigger than a car from the roof, and delivering new equipment. In the interior of the building, we're adding ducts in some areas to ensure more fresh air, and heaters in some areas to fight the coldest of days. Throughout the summer, there will be changes made to all the equipment as we upgrade our operations to new post-COVID-19 standards. For example, all our filters are being changed to MERV-13 filters, which are capable of filtering and trapping the coronavirus. We're adding industrial ionizers to rooftop equipment, which also target viral particles in the air. Basically, an industrial-sized version of the type of air purifiers many people have in their homes. In addition, we are doing other work throughout the interior of the building. So now I'm going to pass you on to Lauren Parrish, our production manager, so you can hear a little bit more about that. Thanks, Brian. So I'm here today in the theater with the group, so we have our masks on. Uh, in the last year, we have been working on a number of small but significant improvements to the space, my favorite of which are these railings. They weren't here before. You all asked for them, and so we added them. Uh, there will be a lot of wonderful things back in the theater when you are back in the theater. Hand it off to Ryan. Thank you, Lauren. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan James Monroe, and I'm the facilities manager at 59E59 Theaters. I'm in the building today to meet with an iron worker who is repairing one of the steps in our main stairwell in the lobby space. But while I was here, I wanted to take you downstairs and show you a project we've recently completed. As you can see, in both bathrooms downstairs, we have replaced the glass countertop with this beautiful new Corian countertop. Um, and we really wanted to recreate the design intent of the original architect, Leo Modersen, but we did not want to go with the glass again and run into the same issues of it cracking over time after years of use. So we called up Leo, who's in Croatia, and he guided us to selecting this gorgeous Corian countertop, which has a blue, green color and it's very reminiscent of the original green glass that was here and also the white in this countertop adds a certain level of brightness and light to the space. Um, in addition to that we've installed brand new touch-free automatic hand soap dispensers at every sink in both bathrooms downstairs and as you can see above me the ceiling is completely ripped out in preparation for our HVAC project which is currently underway. Thank you so much. We're really excited about what we have going on here for you. And I will pass it on to our artistic director, Val Day. Thank you, Ryan. We're all looking forward to the new bathrooms. But moving on, I want to talk to you about something completely different. As some of you may be aware, in partnership with the Elizabeth Kleinhans Theatrical Foundation 59 was able to award COVID relief grants to five theater companies. Two of the companies that we gave grants to are co-op resident companies. The first of which New Light Theater Company is using their award to further develop and hopefully produce in 2022 at 59, a new play by their New Light, New Voices award winner, E.E. E. Adams. Please listen now to E.E. E. and her director, N.J. Aguna, discuss E.E.'s e. play, Inkwell. Hi, my name is Erin, and I am the playwright of Inkwell. And my name is N.J., and I am directing Inkwell. Great. So why did you write this play? <laughs> okay. So I wrote this play um, 
because I wanted to explore um, a family in grief and how grief isn't always linear and that it's many emotions. It's not just sadness, it's also unexpected joy. It's um, despair. It's also like inspiration and how the somewhat we think of a linear way of, of mourning someone is actually more of like a spider web of many different things. And so that is why I wrote this play. Um, or the, yeah. So, uh, NJ, what excites you the most about directing this play? I mean, you've already covered so many things, but it was exploring a family in grief. And I'm all about relationships on stage and how they can really show us how to have co more conversations with each other and also show us the lives that we're living. Um, and it's also the escapism of the show. Just escaping into memory is always a fascinating thing for me. And I I love the way that it is explored here in this play. Um, so I'm excited to bring it to audiences at 59E, 59, especially, you know, because we need it. We need <laughs> to, <Yes. laughs> to commune together in a space and, you know, relearn what it's like to be human, I think. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. It's been a long that. time. A lot of Zoom <laughs> screens. So I'm, yes. I'm ready to get into space and like actually meet you face to face. I know. And not face to Zoom. So I, know. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be a totally different height than I imagined you. And it's going to take me like a second to get used to it. <laughs> I mean, because like people on Zoom, someone told me they were like 5'11. And I was like, I definitely thought you were shorter than that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, well, we'll see you all at 59E59. <laughs> yes, we'll see you all at 59E59. Um, looking forward to see you all soon. Thank you, EE e. and NJ. Next up, we have our newest co-op resident company, Less Than Rent. They produced the phenomenal How to Load a Musket in early 2019. Less Than Rent will be using their COVID funds to develop a new play by Nora Bridget Monahan. Please join Rachel B. Joyce, co-artistic director of Less Than Rent, in her conversation with Nora about their play, Marchand, Marchand. Hi, I'm Rachel B. Joyce. I'm one of the artistic directors of Less Than Rent Theater, and I'm here today with playwright Nora Bridget Monahan to discuss their new piece, Marchand, Marchand. Hello. Hi. Tell us about your play. Uh, so Marchand, Marchand is about the Jacobin Club, which was a political club at the height of the French Revolution. And early on in the revolution, the Catholic Church in France was compelled to rent out all of their religious spaces in Paris for the good of the people. And the Jacobins rented this old chapel in Paris and turned it into their clubhouse. And so I thought that was a really interesting setting and um, wanted to explore what the Jacobins were like during their time there in this church turned into a frat house. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, what was your inspiration for the play? How did you begin writing it? I was really interested in and have been for a long time in the character of Maximilian Robespierre, who was the leader of the Jacobins. Um, and I felt in reading his speeches and his writings that the way I experienced him and who he was firsthand through what we have um, was not lining up with how historical you know, books portray him. Uh, and so I was really interested because I felt that the things that he was saying really resonated with contemporary politics. Um, and I think that the revolutionaries in general, the things they were struggling with to have a republic are very, very analogous to things that we have today in the political scene. So besides Robespierre, who are the other characters that we spend time with? Um, so Jean-Paul Marat is a character of Marat Saad fame. Um, and then we have Pauline Léon and Claire Lacombe, and they were two Jacobins who founded a French women's society, um, which only lasted five months due to a scandalous love triangle that they were involved in. Um, but really the play pretty much exclusively focuses on the revolutionaries. Um, unlike, you know, a lot of media, I I'm not looking at 
Louis the Sixteenth or Marie Antoinette, some of the other more famous mm -hmm. um, folks from the French Revolution. We briefly see the Marquis de Lafayette from Hamilton of Hamilton fame, um, but you know that's that's really it. It's mostly looking at the you know working class people and people living in poverty who sought to overthrow their government and establish a new fairer system of government for themselves. Well, we are so delighted to be developing it with you and we're grateful to 5090s59 for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Nora and Rachel. Next up, we have longtime 5090-59 favorite, The Play Company. Please welcome Kate Lowald as she tells us about a project that really caught my eye last year. I think you'll enjoy going behind the scenes of this quirky and moving project, Django in Pain. Hi, I'm Kate Lowald, the founding producer of The Play Company, known to our friends as Playco. I'm Anna Graham, and I'm artistic producer of Porpieta Teatro. I'm Antonio Vega, and I'm artistic director of Por Piedad Teatro, and we are the creators of Django in Pain. Playco and Por Piedad Teatro first performed at 59E59 in 2013 with our show Working on a Special Day. That was a wonderful experience, and now we're so grateful to 59E59 for supporting this new piece, Django in Pain. Val asked us to make a little intro for the members. So Anna and Antonio, let's talk about the piece. How did the idea for the piece first come to you? And why did you choose tabletop theater as the way to tell the story? It had been a while since I wanted to do a show about depression, but I wanted to do it in a fun, uplifting way. Uh, so I came, came up with this story about a depressed guy and a little dog that uh, saves him from his depression. <laughs> and tabletop, because tabletop puppets is something that I like from, uh, for a long time. And I like miniatures and little objects and toys and explore all the ways we can use them to tell stories. And we were in quarantine, so we had to use things that we already had, and we had this desk, and we wanted to explore the possibilities as a set device. And would you please introduce us to a few of the characters? This is Django, the main character. This is Trippy, the little dog, three-legged dog. This is a different version of Trippy. And that guy is the vulture, which is like the the bad advisor, the bad, the bad guy in the story. All the puppets, by the way, I made them myself, except for this one. And we also made the sets. Yes, uh, this is one of the sets. It's the forest where Django runs to find Trippy when he's been attacked by the wolf. And we have many sets that we keep changing on the tabletop. And different techniques, shadow puppetry, miniatures, uh, etc. And what do you hope that audiences will think about or feel when they watch this piece? In some some difficult times this past year, and we are hoping to give a little bit of comfort with this piece. It's a piece about hope and about finding good things when they are most unexpected. So we just hope that the audience. Have a good time. Okay. Well, to everyone at 59E59, we can't wait to share this play with you, Django in Pain, and we wish you all the very best till then. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Anna and Antonio. Looks like you're having a little bit too much fun with those puppets, in my opinion. Next up, let's hear from another award recipient, Hypocrite Productions founding artistic director, Arpada Mukherjee and her artistic collaborator, Aya Aziz. 
Hi, uh, I'm Arpita Mukherjee, and I am the artistic director and co-founder of Hypocrite Productions. And um, one of the first uh, original musicals, actually the first original musical we developed was uh, by Aya Aziz, Ada, Questions for My Father, and Aya wrote uh, music, lyrics, and book for that. Um, and that show has been development with Hypocrite since 2015. Uh, and um, we first uh, produced a solo show version of it, uh, which I, uh, at Nymph, at the New York Musical Festival, and then uh, we did a five person, uh, expanded the show into a musical for a developmental production at um, New York Theatre Workshop at Next Door, which I also directed. And we're continuing on, on this journey uh, of Aya continuing to work on the show. So I'll let Aya talk a little bit more about that. Ah, hello, I'm Aya Aziz. I'm the book, uh, book, music, and lyricist writer of this show. I've been working with Arfida for years on multiple projects. This is our main project and how we came to, to work together. Um, so for the last year, you know, we have this complete production of the work, about 90 minutes, I think, or uh, an hour and 40. Um, and over the last year with the Dramatist Guild Foundation as a musical theater fellow, I've been reviewing these works um, and getting feedback on each of the music no musical numbers in the show um, and kind of breaking the show apart to examine its central tension, which revolves around um, as a semi-biographical work, uh, myself <laughs> in the show and um, the, the primary character in the show and, and her relationship with her father who uh, is trying to keep her from her Arab heritage um, and has separated her from that uh, throughout her life. And so examining um, uh, and strengthening their bond and their conflict and um, the musical language uh, through which they engage each other, um, especially the, the show's main musical number, Questions for My Father, which is the title of the show. Um, and kind of returning to that and reorienting the show around that central tension, um, which we always felt we wanted to do. There was a lot of narration in the earlier uh, uh, developmental production of the, the work. And so this last year I've been kind of restructuring and getting feedback on that structure, story structure, um, between dad and daughter, and also all of the other smaller stories the show holds uh, within the world of her family and the world of, you know, evolving in the Arab diaspora. And so, so it's it's been an experience of of reorganizing and exploration. And this next step is going to be taking the new outline of the show and. Um, writing through it uh, and, and finding the musical language of the new material. And without this grant, um, I mean, this grant has just supported me so much <laughs> in being able to take that time and to be able to, to bring this work to Dramatist Guild um, and, and sit in it on my own time, uh, which, you know, you never have enough of <laughs> in this city as an artist. Um, so I'm really excited because I have now, at least over the last year, built a team of creative, you know, in addition to, to, to working with ARPADA, um, of, but of folks within the industry who have been mentoring me in how to restructure um, the, the show around its central tension. And I'm really excited to, to keep writing. Hey, that's so great. Uh, well, thanks so much, Aya, and thank you so much to 1590s59 for the grant and for um, continuing this work. Thank you, Arpita and Aya. Next up, please welcome my associate curator, Jess Hart, to tell us a little bit about our upcoming virtual program, East to Edinburgh. Take it away, Jess. Thanks so much, Val. I am so excited to let you all know we are bringing back one of our 59E59 theater staples, East to Edinburgh, except this year we're doing East to Edinburgh goes virtual. That's right, E2E goes virtual. Tickets go on sale June 15th. So you have about a month, I know, we're telling you a little early, but we gotta get you excited. That one ticket, that one ticket that you can buy starting June 15th will get you access to every show in our theater. 
Again, that's nine shows, one ticket, nine shows. You get them all, you don't have to pick and choose. And you might be asking, Jessica, how much is that one ticket? For members, it's only $18. I cannot wait for you to see the amazing work these artists have made. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jess. And thank you everyone so much for joining us this evening. We're very sorry we're still only able to do this online, but we ask you all to raise a glass and toast with us. The end of the pandemic looks like it's visible in the not too distant future. Here's to all of you for continuing to support us through these times. Cheers. We look forward to seeing you all in person in the future. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a good night.